You brought up the Road Warriors. It got me thinking about something I talked about not too long ago with Mike Mills, of course, my co-host on the Mid-South Wrestling Television Review Podcast and from Booking the Territory. Are the Mad Max films the most influential films on the wrestling business? (laughs) Considering you get multiple Lord Humonguses, of course, the Road Warriors, which influences various other people. Various people have the look from the movie, from T. Joe Khan to the Barbarian, of course. The Missing Link becomes The Missing Link, and originally they say his name is Max, The Missing Link. Yeah. What movies do you think, if not Mad Max in the series of movies, what movie is the most influential on the wrestling business itself? I think you've already answered the question, because there's always... Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? Anytime something gets over, and if you notice in any kind of entertainment, if if a style of or type of music is hitting, then that's what the record companies used to at least always try to put out. Or, you know, when Westerns were a thing on TV, there were 45 Westerns, and then there was sitcoms, and there's cop shows, and whatever. In wrestling, you copy gimmicks. And, you know, we've all of our listeners are historians and know that uh, Gorgeous George wasn't the first bleached blonde with the robe and the whole nine. Yeah, he just took a lot of other people's stuff and put it all together, but that got over. And then suddenly there was tons of Gorgeous Georges or Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. There was tons of bleached blonde guys with good fucking physiques calling themselves Nature Boys and or doing his shit, et cetera, et cetera. With the Rock and Roll Express. It wasn't a movie that inspired that. Actually, it was the fabulous ones that were the direct inspiration, but it was MTV itself. And the Fabs were the first MTV-style tag team just because Jarrett put them together, did a music video, used rock and roll music, and played it on the... That's their connection to MTV, but the Fabs didn't look anything like... They were doing the ZZ Top videos, but the original Fab videos, they didn't look anything like anybody on MTV. They looked like the updated Fabulous Fargos. But the Rock and Roll Express, for a slightly younger uh, audience, because they were like the teeny bopper version of, you know, Stan and Steve were like fucking porn (laughs) for the women, and the Rock and Roll were kind of like, oh, it's Sean Cassidy again. Um. But they were dressing like the the bands dressed on MTV, so it wasn't specifically a movie. And then everybody copied the Rock and Roll Express. Um, The Midnight Express was the name of a movie. That's right. Uh, And we used the theme music, but actually when, when Dennis took the name Midnight Express, they didn't use the movie music. He didn't know about it. They used uh, Here Comes the Express by BT Express. <laughs> Which had train whistles and everything. Oh my God. I know, but him and Randy Rose and Norvell Austin, they made it work somehow. But when you heard the train whistles and the fucking, and you could see the Afros bouncing on Soul Train, because that was the fuck, it was like a 1972 fucking BT Express track. Um, But the movie influenced the name, and then I suggested the music in Mid South, and it, Who's to say all the heel expresses imitated the Midnight Express and all the baby faces imitated the Rock and Roll Express, but it wasn't technically a movie. Um, what other gimmicks ran wild back when they could do that in the when there were multiple companies? And you oh, can- I mean, I don't know if it was the same day, but certainly around the same time, I have to say it's quite impressive. From outer space, Darth Vader made a lot of shots in the late yeah. 70s <laughs> around the United States in Detroit and Memphis. He was all over the place. He never got over long enough to stay in any one territory. <laughs> but for about two weeks in a row, everybody had Darth Vader. <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn it. Who was the one in Memphis? Lawler went out. He just he didn't even get he wore black long tights and no shirt. And then he had the Darth Vader helmet and a, and a black cape. They wouldn't spend the money for the whole outfit, but it was, I can't even remember who it was, but, uh, but yeah, there were a lot of Darth Vader's for just briefly, like, but there was a Spider-Man. Oh. The, the only comic character that lasted was Batman, Tony Marino in Pittsburgh. I got a movie. That's an interesting pick. 
Billy Jack. Who? Not only did he inspire Billy Jack Haynes himself in and his style of hat wear, but the it, Billy Jack did more at least at the start in the early 70s in the United States to get karate and martial arts over than anybody until and it until Bruce Lee and maybe some after that cuz everybody I'm going to take my right foot and kick you on the right side of your face <laughs> all that shit uh there was a few people that adopted some stylings from that movie but not nearly as many as the road warrior cuz god how many humongous is alone sid was humongous jeff van camp, jeff van camp. Louisville was humongous um who are we forgetting wasn't uh wasn't uh oh god damn it somebody else was humongous mike stallings mike stark mike stark that's stark what i'm thinking humongous of. from that's memphis that's former right. usfl football player mike stallings was a Hell of an athletic young man from, I believe, Georgia in the 70s. Jeff Gaylord was never Lord Humongous, was he? No, only in his dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that was funny. Now, that was funny. <laughs> hey, is there a more influential song? Well, let's, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say, then Bad Bad Leroy Brown, just because you got two characters out of that song. But I'm sure there has to be something. I mean, Nature Boy. Obviously, maybe the most influential song now that I think about it. Well, you know, but now here I read, where did I read this? Maybe, uh, um, did, was it Tim Hornbaker's fine publication on Buddy Rogers? But the nature boy that most people have thought came from the song by Nat King Cole, the song by Nat King Cole may have come from a popular phrase at the time, which was nature boy. And the idea of Nature Boy, Buddy Rogers, may have come from just that phrase in the 30s and 40s rather than the song. I forget where I've just read that sometime recently. So then we could argue if Nature Boy, the song, is influential at all. I really see either very influential or not at all. <laughs> or, or just a, a byproduct. That's right. I do not know. <laughs> 